Hey there students, my name is Nathan and I am a Chegg tutor. In this video today we're going to talk about adjusted gross income. Now this is part of income tax. Now before we start, income tax is quite extensive. There is a lot that goes into calculating taxable income. Now today we're just going to be talking about adjusted gross income, but even with that there's a lot of deductions, there's a lot of types of income that go in, there's a lot of exemptions, pretty much there's a ton of factors that come into play to calculate adjusted gross income. So for this video we're just going to talk about some of the main types of deductions and income that is associated with calculating adjusted gross income. So we're not going to cover everything. And obviously with each type of income, each type of deduction, there's a lot of rules and there's also a lot of other schedules and forms that you have to fill out that needs to be attached to the main 1040 that you fill out for your income tax return. So once again, we're not going to cover everything, but we're going to cover some of the most primary deductions and types of income that go into calculating adjusted gross income. So adjusted gross income is basically starting with your wages and including all other types of income and excluding any types of income that can be exempted or excluded. And then after that, you have to go through many types of deductions to get down to your AGI. So on the left side here, I went ahead and discussed the formula that's going to be used for this particular example. So you have your main wages that you get from your primary job. Then there's other types of income. So you can have a business income that you're going to get from what they call your Schedule C. So you fill out a different form and you put that on your 1040. Now with this Schedule C that can be many different types of businesses. Sole proprietorships is mainly what's covered here. Now, what a lot of you may be experiencing is you receive a 1099 because you're an independent contractor. That would also go on your Schedule C. So some of the big types of 1099 jobs there are today are Uber, Lyft, uh, Airbnb, Thumbtack. It's what they call the, the gig economy. So a lot of people are starting these independent contracting jobs where they cover a lot of their own expenses and you're not really employed by anyone. So if you are part of either Uber, Lyft, Airbnb, you would fill out a Schedule C and that income would go on your 1040. Now you have income associated with those jobs, but there's also types of expenses that you can use to offset your income. Again, we're not going to get too much into those types of expenses, but they're qualified expenses that can offset that income that will hopefully uh, reduce your taxes. There's also other types of income like uh, interest from state and local bonds. If you invest in those and you earn interest on it, that interest is tax exempt. So you don't have to include it in your income. Then you get your gross wages after that. Now, once again, there's a lot of other types of income that go into this to get to your gross wages. But again, we're not going to cover all of it. I'm just going to cover those two types. Then you have your deductions, what they call 4AGI. Now, 4AGI means deductions that will contribute to calculating your AGI. 4AGI. Here's a few different types. Um, if you pay any kind of alimony, if you have any type of educator expenses, moving expenses, student loan interest, and tuition and fees. Now, there's a lot of other types of deductions as well. But see, these are some of the main types that may actually apply to your life. So from here, after you go ahead and take those deductions for AGI, we get to our adjusted gross income. Now, if you want to know other types of deductions for AGI, other types of income, just go look at a 1040 form when you're filling it out for your tax return. They list a lot of other different types of income and deductions for AGI. But once again, for this video, I'm just focusing on these types. So this is the basic formula here to calculating AGI. Let's go ahead and look at a little problem on the right side and we can go ahead and apply our knowledge. So on April 1st, 2016, Sarah decided to complete her tax return 
using a 1040. She has 25 grand in wages from her W-2 for her teaching job and also $10,000 from driving for Uber and renting out her apartment using Airbnb. Qualified expenses related with Uber and Airbnb amounted to two grand. So those are expenses that are qualified that you can actually use to offset your Uber and Airbnb income. And again, that goes on your Schedule C. You fill that out and you attach it to your 1040. Now she's also has qualified moving expenses from her um, employer that are unreimbursed for $400. Now if they're reimbursed, you can't deduct them because you receive that back in income. But if they're unreimbursed, that means that you paid out of pocket and the IRS will allow you to deduct that. Now she's also invested in municipal bonds and earned $300 in interest. In 2015, she lived on campus as well and finished her education degree. She incurred $1,500 in room and board and $5,000 for tuition and books. Now with the tuition and fees, uh, the IRS does not allow you to deduct room and board. It's just one of their rules. But they will allow you to deduct tuition and books. So now we're asking how to calculate her AGI. So let's go ahead and do a basic formula here. We'll start with her wages. So she had 25 grand from her teaching job. Then she also had her business income, which is through Uber and Airbnb. So her business income here was 10 grand for Uber and Airbnb combined. So we'll go ahead and add that here, 10 grand. Now she also had qualified expenses for um, Uber and Airbnb as well. So we'll go ahead and just subtract those out here. So expenses of two grand. Then we also had this ex uh, interest through her uh, investments in municipal bonds. So we'll say interest from bonds, which is gonna be $300. Now, the interesting thing is you have to include that in your income, that interest, but it's also tax exempt. So once you include it, you can also deduct it as well. Because kind of how it works is you just basically throw everything into your income and then later on you figure out what is exempt and what is not. So this is tax exempt income here or interest. So we'll just go ahead and deduct that right away. Then from there, looks like there's no other types of income in this problem. So we're gonna go ahead and just get our gross wages, which is right here. So 25 plus 10, 35 grand minus two grand uh, is 33 and that's it because that's a wash here for the $300 and $300 so she should have $33,000 in gross wages now from there she can make some deductions so minus deductions for AGI she'll have a few here so she had unreimbursed moving expenses so let's go ahead and deduct that out That's going to be for $400 for unreimbursed moving expenses. And one thing I didn't include up here, let's just assume that she also has $200 in student loan interest. So we can deduct that as well. for $200 and looks like she also has 1500 in room and board but like I said earlier the IRS does not allow you to deduct that so you have to go ahead and ignore it but she can deduct that 5000 in tuition and books so tuition and fees is what they call it go for five grand and that's all I see here so what we can do now is just go ahead and figure out our AGI 
So this is going to equal our AGI, or what they call adjusted gross income. So 33 grand minus 500, oh, sorry, 33 grand minus 5,000 minus 400 minus 200. So her AGI would come out to be 27,400. Now, again, this is more of a basic approach to AGI and how to calculate it. Once again, tax is so extensive. There's a lot that goes into it, a lot of different forms and rules. But this is kind of like an introduction to how to calculate AGI and some of the main deductions and main types of income that you'll see. So hopefully this was helpful for you all today. Once again, my name is Nathan G. That's what I go by on Check Tutoring. So feel free to go there and message me if you need some homework help, one-on-one -on -one tutoring or exam prep. Just send me a message and I'd be happy to help you out. Once again, thanks for listening today and I'll see you in the next video.